Hello and uh, welcome to module 5, part 2, about information management, which is also helpful to ongoing monitoring. This is the standard. Institutions shall ensure that they collect, analyze and use relevant information for the effective management of the educational institution, their programs and other activities. This information shall include the profile of the student population, including prevalence of vulnerable groups. Slide two, this is about data. Data, which is important for ongoing monitoring and information management. So who holds this data? Is it, for example, the registrar's office, if you've got a big organization, or a single person, if you have a small organization? Do all this stuff have access for viewing this data because it's important uh, to respect GDPR rules? So what kind of reports can the institution make out of this data? And do you want to keep data for vulnerable groups, which include, for example, physical or mental disabilities, financial problems, and does your institution support financially? How? In what way? And what are the policies and procedures here? Who is responsible to determine that kind of support? If the institution gives stipends to students, how is this monitored? Or scholarships, how are they monitored? In the third slide, we speak also about data. Course participation, retention and success rates. Are you getting information and monitoring this? Are these monitored on a monthly basis or how often? And does the institution send any data to the National Statistics Office or any other third party? What is the evidence that you have about all this? Are they reports? How often are they made? and who receives them and what is done with these reports. In this slide, slide four, I'm going to give you a case of the Institute of Tourism Studies, how we collect the data as part of information management and we do monitor it uh, throughout a calendar year. So actually in September, when the scholastic year starts, the uh, institution through the registrar's office collects the data for the current year. In the month of October, there is a completion of the report of the whole previous year. And in the meantime, we are still collecting data of the current year. From October to February, because February is the end of the first semester of the new academic year, there is a report about the first semester on, on students. This is where we monitor the first semester and actually issue a report about it. Uh, in March, this report is presented to the Board of Governors, the Internal Quality Assurance Committee, and also to the Chief Executive Officer, because all this information, we manage it, but we also communicate it with these uh, that I just mentioned, with these stakeholders, and there is a meeting to discuss this in order to see what can be enhanced, what can be done better. Then in March and June, there is again a data collection of the second semester, like we started with the cycle in the first semester. In July, there's the second report about the second semester and again it is presented to the stakeholders and this is also discussed in a meeting to see uh, what actions need to be taken and of course in august and september there is the final data uh, collection and final reporting now in the next slide i will uh, obviously explain what type of data uh, we are going to go. So the various data includes the retention or success rates, the quotient between students who pass the subject and the students enrolled. We also have attendance monitoring through appropriate software. We also have the graduate rate, percentage of students that finish their studies in the expected time versus those who finish later through extensions or failures, because we want to know this as well. 
Now, the dropout number rates, uh, the number of students that drop out from each department and the number of dropouts per academic year are also presented in a, in a report. And if you have work placements at your institutions, this should also be uh, managed as information and also given monitoring about it. And the weekly hours of teaching staff are also important and the assessment patterns. And we also ask uh, if you are satisfied. So in the next slide, I'm going to tell you um, what to look for if the students are satisfied or not with, with their programs. So first of all, you have to look at complaints. Were there any complaints? How many were there are? What about? And how are solutions delivered? Does your students council also keep data on complaints? And you have to have evidence which can come from various areas, including the student's questionnaire response, the student's council or quality assurance office, etc. In order to do this, I will explain in the next slide what research you need to, to do. So the research is about employment rates and career paths. You need to also do regular trade studies and what is the policy about, about these. And where are the findings published and what happens after this? So what do you do with all this information management and ongoing monitoring? So the evidence can be a tracer report or a national research report as well. In the next slide, I will explain about the sources. So in slide eight, the sources, there are various methods of collecting information which can be used. Sources of such information may include the external audit agency for further and higher education or anyone else who provides this service in your country or in your region. There are internal and external sources of data and information can come from different sources from your country. In the next slide, I explain the further readings. The best you can do is read my notes in order to have a complete picture of ongoing monitoring and information management that of part one and part two. Thank you for listening.